All right, so before we uh, leave this uh, topic on supervised classification, just wanted to mention a few other options within Orf Orfeo and, and QGIS. So what we looked at predominantly was, well, first, unsupervised classification, where the alg algorithm clusters the data, and then the user has to go through and reclassify the image into um, uh, informational classes. Um, and then we looked at supervised classification where training data was selected and a machine learning algorithm was used to um, predict back to all the pixels in an image. So when we have a high spatial resolution image where the pixels are fairly small, um, it's actually common to try to group the pixels before we perform a classification. And that's known as object-based image analysis or geographic object-based image analysis or OBIA or GOBIA. So um, just as a, qu a quick note, there are tools available in QGIS and Orfeo specifically to do more object-based classifications. We're not going to go through a whole process, but I just wanted to talk about um, how that would be done and some of the, the key components. Okay, so um, here's our image again. So these segmentation processes can be pretty slow. So what I'm going to do is extract out like a real a, a small extent of the image just so we can run something and get a sense of, of how it looks. So I'm going to do like something like that extent. All right, so I'm going to go up to raster and then um, extraction and extract by extent and we'll use the uh, current of the map canvas extent. So it should just extend out, extract out the portion of the image which is in the current viewing extent. And we don't want to do the classification, we want to do the image. So swap that. And then we want to save the file. So I'm just going to call this prog subset 3. I think I had a couple subsets already. Um, and then we'll hit run. Okay, cool. So close. So we close this. So now we ha should have a little piece of this image. Um, and let's change the symbology there. So again, if we do like a 3, 2, 1 to get a true color type image or a uh, 4, 3, 2 to get your standard false color image. All right, so there we go. That's our um, that image subset. So now what we want to do is take this image and use an algorithm to break it into little polygons, areas, or segments. Okay, so let's look at that in, in QTB, so in, or Orfeo. Okay, so uh, the tools for doing segmentation are under segmentation. And there are a couple different options here. So we have a small regions merging, segmentation, it's general there. Um, there's this large area scale mean shift. So there's lots of different options for doing segmentation and there's pros and cons for each. Um, if you wanna get into this, I mean, you just kinda need to research the different options and you know, the pros and cons, maybe try it out on your, try a couple different ones out in your data. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go to segmentation and let's see what options are available here. So we have mean shift, CC, M profiles, and watershed. The only ones I really know much about are mean shift and, and watershed. Let's just set this to mean shift. Um, and then as you can see here, there's a bunch of user-defined parameters that could theoretically impact the, the segmentation. Um, Let's actually look at the help for this tool real quick and see what our options are. Um, so mean shift is OTB implementation mean shift algorithm runs multi-thread, simple pixel-based connected component algorithm connected components. I don't really know much about that. So watershed one morphological profile. So those are your different methods. Again, we're just going to stick with mean shift. Um, spatial radius of the neighborhoods, ra uh, range radius. So this is basically just your user-defined parameters for how the segmentation will be performed. Um, one thing I did want to look at was the output vector file options. So we got an update output vector file only allowed um, so create new layers, override output vector file if it exists, update output vector file, update output vector file, 
So we're just going to create a new one. Um, so I guess we'll just leave that alone. We don't need a mask. Okay, so there's lots of settings here. That's one of the complexities of this is you have to go through and, you know, play around with it a bit to make sure that it uh, works the way that you'd expect. Okay. Um, I think this is, we'll just leave it run with the defaults. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it, so I'm going to save it out to a file. We'll call it segments prog dot shape. Save it out to a shape file. Again, I've generally found shape files generally work pretty well with uh, with the Orfeo tools. So let's run that and see what happens. So again, these are pretty slow, um, especially over a large extent. So this might be something that you walk away from or let run overnight unless you're, again, doing a, a small extent. Okay, so it looks like it produced an output. So let's hit close here and go up to our directory. I'm just going to find it here in my directory tree. So we'll do uh, demos. Let me do a refresh just in case the didn't refresh after it completed. And we're looking for segments prog. Okay, there we go. So now we have this segmented output. Um, let's uh, make it hollow. Let's hollow out its or hollow out the symbology so we can see it. Make it opaque, and then we'll make the lines maybe like a. Oops. We'll make the stroke like a red, and let's move the thing. We'll make it. Well, yeah, we'll just leave it where it was. Okay. Maybe not red since. Uh, since the image is very red. So um, let's change this to maybe like a blue or something. Not really sticking out at all. Maybe the radius is really low. Let's bump up the radius size a bit here. Okay. I'm not really sure why that's not working. Let me just re add it to a move layer and add it back in there. I'm not sure what I did wrong with the symbology. I'm going to try again. I might have probably set something wrong. Um, so, again, we'll make the stroke a little bit bigger. And we need to get rid of this fill. So we go back up here, make the fill opaque. Now that's why, because that's being applied to both the fill and the uh, extent there. Now let me just go to a uh, single symbol. Maybe we can just do a, uh, we'll just pick an outline here. Sorry about that. All right, there we go. So if we zoom in here, we can see all these little segments. And again, if you want, if you feel like this is inadequate, then you probably want to go back through and change your um, parameter settings and see how it impacts it. Um, what I generally find is it's kind of class specific. So if you have um, a region like this that's really homogeneous, you might feel like it's been overly segmented. But then if you get to the point where this is one big blob, then um, the forest isn't working out well. Um, so it's kind of like a give and take. Um, let's open up the attribute table. And as you see here, there's only one value in there. It's a DN that it got from the raster that it produced and then it converted to a vector. Um, so what would be the next step in this process? So once you created these objects, the next step in the process would be to calculate statistics relative to them. So there are tools for doing that in the in this toolbox. So if you go to feature extraction, um, object radiometric statistics, then you can feed in your um, your uh, your vector data, 
and then uh, it'll generate some statistics for each of the objects. So effectively what you'll do is generate a bunch of statistical measures for each object and then you'd have to select objects that become your training samples for each class and then you could feed that into a learning process using the vector one. So you could use your labeled objects and the statistics that were calculated on them to do a trained vector classifier. And then once that's trained, then you could use vector classifier to classify back to um, the, uh, the, all the objects and create a, a classification at the object scale. Um, so anyway, that's one option for potentially improving classifications, and that's going to be most at, um, appropriate when you have high spatial resolution data.